finish this chapter tonight. We got hung up on that uh, day of Christ last week. We're in Philippians chapter number two, and I showed you how the, that day of Christ uh, is, a, is a, a period of time and could not be just referring to the rapture. And the only way it could be is if the Antichrist comes for the rapture, and uh, that ain't that won't work. So uh, we talked about that, and, and we'll get into some strong meat here tonight, also a little bit, and it might help you. But also a lot of practical stuff in here. And I don't want to overlook either one. I don't want to get hung up on a doctrine and miss all the practical stuff he's given us here in Philippians. So let's just read this chap, the rest of this chapter. I'm going to do it a little bit different than I have been doing. And then I'll go back and comment on it. You see, we, we finished up last week talking about that day of Christ, verse 16. And um, so let's begin reading with verse 17. Let's all read it. You listen to me. Uh, follow along. Yea. And if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. All these verses are him rejoicing because of what God's done in their church and self-explanatory. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But you know the proof of him that as a son with the father, talking about Timothy, he hath served with me in the gospel. Him therefore I hope to send presently so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. That's an old, there it is, that King James dictating our English language. How's it going? Well, as soon as I see how it goes, there it is. That's where stuff like that comes from. Our language is shot through with quotations of the King James Bible. So how it goes with me. Uh, but I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. He tells them, I don't come preach revival, see y'all, have camp meeting. And yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier like his right-hand man, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. Now look what happened to this guy. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. This guy got really bad off. Here's how bad it was. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. I mean, he come a hair of dying. But God had mercy on him. And not only on, on him only, but upon me also lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him there fully that when you see him again, you may rejoice sadness and hold such in reputation. He was nigh unto death. Going, even though he's about to die. Not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. I don't know if you ever heard a sermon on, but that's some old boy there. He was sick, almost dead, and almost gives life so that they could have what they needed. All right, let's go back and let's mention a couple of things. First thing I want you to look at is uh, verse 19. But I trust the Lord to send Timotheus unto you that I also may have good comfort when I know your state. Now, here's a doctrine. That word state. And the doctrine is you've got to learn the difference between state and standing. State and standing. See, for I have no man, verse 20, who will naturally care for your state. Now, here's the difference. You're, you know why he didn't say standing? He didn't, have, he didn't have to worry about nobody caring for their standing. Because your standing in Christ is perfect. Like this. You heard these old songs when, when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. That's a true doctrine, but that's only half of it. That's our standing. See, now, if I, if I get mad and smart off to my wife or one of my kids and I, and I sin or do, say something I shouldn't or do something I shouldn't, that don't affect my standing. See, it's, it's, not, like, it's not like the Lord's a person. All right, all right, you, you, got, you got jealous. Zoom, your name's out of the book of life. You know, and when you repent, he writes it down again. That ain't the way this works. You're standing uh, 
in Christ does not change. Your state, however, is ever how you happen to be living. So a Christian, can their standing in Christ can be perfect, but your state, see, and that's why there's different denominations. Some of the denominations put all the emphasis on the state, and some of them put it all on standing. So, I, so some people are what you call hyper grace, and they say, they say, well, I mean, ain't nothing you can do to save yourself. There ain't nothing to do you keep yourself safe. So really don't, don't, don't sweat it, man. Just enjoy the ride. And that ain't right. That ain't right. Uh, that's not true. And then there's other people say, good night, if you do something wrong, you're not saved no more. And that ain't right either. You have to try your best to live right and serve God and confess your sins and do the best. That's your state. Your standing got fixed the night you got saved. You understand? Coming on that one day, but can't spend a lot of time on it tonight. Learn the difference between and standing. Your state is however you're living right now. You're standing. Your name's in the book of life. When he sees you, he don't see no sin. That's the difference. He does see your state. He'll beat your britches off too. So you see, it is like say, well, God don't see me when it. Yes, He does. But it's just not on your record, on your standing. Okay. All right. Look at verse 20. For I have no man like-minded who cares. 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Now that's a, basically a verse that says, for the most part, most people are just out for old number one. And, and that's true. We're all like that. We are all like that. Amen? I mean, especially us men. Men are selfish. Men uh, want the old number one first. And if a man's right with the Lord, he can be good to his woman and treat her right and take care of her. If he ain't right with the Lord, he, he just loves himself. And most men. There are exceptions, but for the for the record, most men. All right, and women too, and teenagers, every kid, every kid, every kid. You get your kid a toy. I want to play for it. No, I want to play for it. Play play with it. No, I want to play with it. No. They'll fight. You know why? Oh, number one. It's human nature. Um, and in church, we have to be careful, me, all of us, have to be careful. That we don't have to have everything our way all the time. And we also, listen to me, we also have to be careful not to let it bother us and upset us when it don't go our way. We have to learn how to do that. If you're ever, I know people change churches every two years and have done it for 15 years. And the reason, they've never learned that right there. Things can't and won't always go your way. I get my feelings hurt about every Sunday. Um, I, I, I. Y'all might not believe this, but I got you memorized where you sit. I can, I can go home on Monday, and I can tell you who wasn't here on Sunday. And usually the, if somebody's out two or three Sundays, I can tell. I remember it. Don't ask me how I do that. It's a pastor's, it's a pastor's heart. I can, I, you might not believe that, but I guarantee you. You might say, I'll just sort of slip out Sunday. He'll never notice. Oh, yeah, I do. I know if your kids are here. I know if your mama's here. I know uh, uh, two or three days after Sunday, I'll say, or so and so. Maybe y'all call so and so. Maybe y'all call so and so. Uh, and I guess that's a part of being a pastor. And I know where you sit. And I got it memorized. Because sometimes I pray and I start right over there with Miss Desi and go down that way and down this way and down this way and down that way. And and you got to make sure. Let me give you an example since she's not in here. Uh, Carrie, my daughter, uh, we made that CD, you know, here back in the fall. And we was all bragging them on it and was excited about it and everything and everything. And, and you know what? Carrie sings two songs with a choir and neither one of them got put on the CD. And I've seen people quit church over stuff like that. I have. I've seen it. Take it personal. And, and I didn't even realize it. I didn't know it. <laughs> and I, took, uh, I said, I want to put that song on. I said, didn't we put that song on her? She said, no. I said, are you mad? She said, no. She said, no, it's fine. The truth be known, it probably did. She was like, you know, probably bothered a little bit. But she was nice about it. She was real nice about it. She showed a lot of maturity about it. I didn't, I didn't have to say, oh, please, Carrie, don't quit church. It wasn't personal. Oh, you just don't like the way I sing, Daddy. And, uh, see, all seek their own, not the things. I, I didn't do it on purpose, I promise you. That, sun, that Saturday evening, we all come in here and practiced all them songs. And then we got up here and had that service Saturday night. And I was just praying them as they come to my mind. And I, and I guess I thought, I guess I thought 
we did it during service and we did it during the practice. So it wasn't on purpose. It just that's just the way it happened. And yes, by do over right there. And there's two or three more songs. We could probably have five or six more songs on there. But my goodness, 25 songs on a CD is a lot. But I learned learned how I took a group of people to sing at a church one night. The pastor invited me, and I went to a lot of trouble. And we took a busload of kids to Asheville to sing. And I had them there already, pumped it up here in church, pumped it up, and they didn't call on us. And there's some other groups up to sing. And I'll be honest with you. I said, hey, no, man. I pushed this, and I got all these people to come. And, I, and they didn't even call on us to sing. And right quickly, the Lord reminded me, when you're up here doing this, you're not, it, it's like you're in a bee's nest or something, and you're trying to follow the Spirit. And I'm sure that pastor was trying to follow the Spirit. But people say, Brother Danny, why did he call on us? I said, just calm down. I call. We probably didn't. Lord probably didn't want us to sing. And sometimes God will do that to you. So you learn, you got, you've got to learn to do that. You've got to. You've got to learn. And it could be, it could be anything. Your birthday or teaching a class or your, or you get sick into the hospital and Nobody calls, or maybe we forget about to mention you or something. Don't don't be learn learn how to uh, seek. Just, just say, hey, it's a church. Nobody's perfect. Let's go with it. Amen. Uh, you know, and that's what you got to do. And while I'm on that, I I don't try to y'all don't try to straighten each other out. Once in a while, you'll have somebody in the church, and they feel like it's their calling, like uh, a certain. Uh, I, I tell you what, the way she, she lets her kids do it, and I went over and I told her, no, that is not the way to do it. The way God's got this thing set up is one man's up here preaching, and he just shoots it like a shotgun. Boom! And lets the chips fall where they will. If y'all start going to each other personally and rebuking each other, it ain't going to work, I'm telling you. It ain't going to work. There ain't a woman in here wants another woman to be telling her she ain't doing good with her kids. It don't work. It won't work, I'm telling you. And and you say, well, she should never. Well, maybe she should. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm like old deputy dog. I say, I'll do the preaching around here. And don't you forget it. Y'all don't even remember deputy dog, do you? Uh, but that's why we got a preacher. Let them get mad at me. I mean, a lot of times people do. I have somebody get mad every week just about. I'm used to it. But don't don't feel like it's your job to straighten each other out for heaven's sake don't punch a woman on the shoulder and say I think your daughter's dress is a little short you likely get a knuckle sandwich and if you're a woman she'll say it's none of your business and if you're a man she'll say what are you doing looking amen that's right so I didn't plan on saying this I just popped in my head but uh all seek their own, not things that are Christ Jesus. The thing we need to learn how to do is say, you know what? I'm going to do my best for the team, brother, for the team. That's the way you win ball games. team got to do it. team got to do it. You can't have, uh, we, used, we used to know in basketball, if, we could, if, it, if they start fussing with each other, we had them, boy. You get them arguing back and forth and mad at each other, and fun, you, you are, you're in good shape. And that's where church is. If he get us bickering at each other, then uh, he's got his foot in the door. All right, quickly tonight, let's move on. For all seek your own, not the thing that's Christ Jesus. Verse 22, you know, the proof of him that was the son of the father, he served with me. I want to get on down here to that guy getting sick. And I, I like how it goes with me. I read verse 23, and look at uh, verse number 26. You've heard this guy had been sick. And it's interesting that Paul said he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him. Now, in that situation, that shows you that healing comes from God. And God decides who gets better and who don't. And the truth is, all healing comes from God. Really, really. Nobody could ever get better if the Lord didn't, didn't allow that in, in a broad sense. But this guy, he was almost ready to die, and I guess they prayed for him, and he got well. Now, we're all going to have our battles with sickness. Uh, we do. I know, I know y'all think I don't, but I do. I mean, it's been a while, but it's been a long time since I've been sick. 
but I, I've been sick before, and I'm going to get it sick again. Nobody's immune to it. Nobody's above it. And so let, let's look here at, at why didn't Paul send him a, a handkerchief? Why didn't Paul just send somebody over to lay hands on him? He almost died. All right? I'm going to show you briefly this sub, stuff about healing. While we're at it here, we might as well help because some of, there's so much confusion on the doctrine of healing that you need to get it figured out in your head what the Bible really teaches. So you see somebody on TV, you say, Brother Danny, I saw it in my own eyes. A guy hit this woman in the head and she fell over like that and she, and she was healed. Well, maybe she was. Maybe she was, maybe she wasn't. But let me show you what the Bible says about healing. Do you have your Bible? Here we go. And you, you ain't going to get this probably. In, it might not be two more churches in this county where you'll get this. Let's see what the Bible says. Take your Bible and turn to Exodus chapter 4. First time in the Bible where a person is uh, miraculously healed of a sickness uh, that we can find. Exodus chapter 4. This is Moses. and he. Uh, God tells him he's going to show him a sign. He'll show Moses a sign here. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 6. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous. Had leprosy on his hand. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. He put his hand into his bosom again, plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as the other flesh. Healed him right there. That was a sign to uh, Pharaoh and unbelievers and his own people too. So that's a, a miraculous miracle there of healing. And so God told Moses, he said, uh, stick your hand in and he put it like this. And he said, now pull it out. And, and he pulled it out and it had leprosy. Oh my goodness, no Lord. No, I got old sores and pus running off. And the Lord said, put it in there again. Put it in there again. He said, now pull it out. It's clean, just like that. It wasn't like these healers now, you know, where he says, look, you know, I was born with one arm shorter than the other. Can you do something for me? And they heal. Oh, it's a miracle. No, it wasn't like that. That, that ain't the way it worked. It wasn't, it wasn't one of those things where one of the guys had, this woman, had a woman had a gourd, or a big old something growed on her neck real big right here, and he touched it, and it went down like that, and they found out that it, it was like a balloon covered with flesh colors, and they was doing that in every town they was going to. And crooks like that is what gives real healing a bad name. Now, we as Baptist preachers, they love to accuse us. And they say, I've been accused Baptists don't preach the whole Bible. Oh no, listen, boy, we you, you get you get more Bible here in, in six months, you will ten years in some of them charismatic churches. I'm not saying that bragging, I'm that's just the truth. That's just the truth. Look, they say they say we don't preach the whole Bible because we don't speak in tongues and claim we have the gift of healing and, and miracles. Now, are you listening to me? Everybody with a brain knows God can heal. And anybody that's been saved any while at all knows God does heal. He's healed me before. And when I get sick, the first thing I do is pray. And I start asking myself, did I do something to cause this? Have I done something wrong? That, that, that this, or is it just one of them things? Or is it just my turn to suffer and make me a better person? Or what the deal here is, and and uh, and so God does heal. If the Lord wanted to right now, He could take my tongue and I could start talking in Chinese just like that, right? Of course He could. Of course He could. And there have been cases on the mission field where stuff like that really does has happened, uh, but not not in a whole church full of people that speak English. Then somebody's up talking in another language, and everybody in there speaks English. That you know. Uh, the, when Benny Hinn goes to another country where you really would use the gift of healing or tongues, he has to have an interpreter to tell them people what he's saying. Now if you can if you can speak another language, that's the time to do it. And I'm not trying to be ugly, nothing personal, but let's just let's just get it straight while we're at it, okay? Let's just get this straight while we're at it. God can do anything. Now look, if you heard me talking Chinese, you know it's a miracle, brother. That's a, that's a real tongue right there. Because I can't talk Chinese. I can't even talk Yankee. Uh, uh, I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm 
Christian by birth, Southern by the grace of God. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, uh, I can't talk another language. But God, the Lord could do it if there was a need for it and he chose to. Can, when you get sick, you come up here, we'll lay hands on you, we'll pray for you, God can heal. God can heal, God does heal. But here's, what, here's the way you know you're a bunch of crooks. Something popped up on my phone. I guess, I guess the things you look at links you to other things. And it was some revival they're having down here somewhere. And it said, this is your chance. Come March 7th, 8th, and 9th. They say, these signs, wonders, healing, and, and uh, gifts. And the first thing I thought was, why didn't it say the dead raised? It said, see, the sick will be healed. The lame can walk. But it didn't say the dead will be raised. <laughs> you know why? Because there ain't no dead going to be raised. If a man has the gifts like the apostles had it, he can raise dead people. That's right. That's right. You say, well, God can. I didn't say he couldn't. God can. God couldn't raise a dead person if he wants to. He can. I mean, he's done it. But you've got to get it through your head that we are, you're not an apostle. And I'm not an apostle. And the apostles had what they call, quote, sign gifts. It was a sign to Israel. And as the ministry, I'll prove it to you, and Acts shifted from Jew to Gentiles, the apostles' ministry faded and the Gentile ministry began. Now, as soon as you say that, they'll say, oh, you believe these miracles are over. I didn't say that. You're listening to demons. God can still work any miracle he ever worked. If that's not right, what I said, meet me after church. I've got a friend of mine over in Asheville Hospital in bad shape. We'll go, you can go heal him for me, right? If you're an apostle, if you're an apostle, they ought to start taking dead people to these meetings. There's Mamma, she's been dead three or four days. We ain't buried her yet. Can you? Really? It, I mean, if they got a healing power like that, they're claiming to be apostles. The apostle sister of Sharon, somebody, uh, uh, was going to was going to raise the dead. Then put up, or shut up. All right, quickly. I'm going to give you these verses. Sometimes people get healed who are not right, and they think they're right because they got healed. First Kings 13. We're going through the Bible now, quick, because we're not we're running out of time really quick here. First Kings chapter 13. This is about a Six week study in about 10 minutes. First Kings 13, and look at verse 4. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam, he wasn't right with God. He's a bad king there. He became a sin over there in chapter 4 and done stuff that wasn't right. And he got sick and he cried out against the altar in Bethel that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up and he couldn't pull it in again, just like Moses did. And the altar was rent, the ashes poured out in the altar. According to the sign, remember that, which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of God, pray for me, lay hands on me, man, heal me, and that my hand may be restored. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again. That guy wasn't even right. I've had people tell me, they say, Are you a Christian? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know I'm a Christian because I had cancer and and I prayed and it went away. Well, that don't mean you're a Christian. Might mean God might have had mercy get, get, made it go away. I don't know. Now, show you another one. I'm going to show you a time when God uses medicine. Isaiah. You got a lot of these groups that don't believe in medicine. Uh, some of these denominations don't believe you should take medicine. And they believe if you, if you take medicine, it's a sign that you're not trusting God. And there have been cases where the kids have died. Kids have died, literally died, and uh, because the parents didn't believe in going to the doctors. They didn't believe in doctors. If you had enough faith, you would never need a doctor. Well, uh, you're a nut. You're a nut. There's times when doctors do good. Now, there might be times when you do have enough faith and you don't need to go to the doctor. But watch this. Watch, let's get our Bible right here now. Isaiah 38. Isaiah 38. And uh, you, you can mark these down. Go home and study them when you get home if you want to. Isaiah 38 and verse number 20. Isaiah 38, 20. For Isaiah, it said, 
Let them take a lump of figs, medicine, and lay it for a... What am I saying? 38.20, I'm sorry. 38.20. For Isaiah said, let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the bowl. What? Okay, 38.21. And lay it for plaster on the bowl, and he shall recover. And Hezekiah also said, what is the sign? There it is again. I shall go up to the house of the Lord. So there's a time when God used medicine to heal people. Now I'm going to show you a time when it don't matter how many medicines you use, you still don't get well. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 46. Here's a case in the Bible where you, you can use every medicine in the world and not get healed. And by the way, that time is coming. Every healer, old Catherine Kuhlman, all them healers, every one of them. Eventually, brother, every doctor in the world can help try to help you and every preacher in the world can pray for you and you're going to die. That's right. Jeremiah chapter number 46, and look at verse number 11. Jeremiah 46, 11. Go up unto Gilead and take balm, O virgin daughter of Egypt. In vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. There's sometimes when God says, that's it. And I, I've known a lot of people. And I know when it's your mom, when it's one of your kids, you want to believe. And I'm the same way. I just say, believe, everybody believe with me. Everybody believe with me. my kids. Will be. And sometimes God will definitely touch them. But there's other times when he don't. And that don't mean you're a failure. Or that don't mean you're wicked. I mean, look, people, you can't stay alive forever. Something's got to take you out eventually. So in that case, uh, no matter how many medicine you use, you don't get it. Now. Second Chronicles 16, and I'm going to show you a guy who uh, just went to the doctor and didn't seek the Lord, and he died. He, he didn't get healed. Second Chronicles. Here's a man. Notice how we're studying the Bible, not what we saw at a tent revival somewhere, or heard about on TV, or heard somebody say. Second Chronicles 16. Notice how we're studying the Bible. 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 12. 2 Chronicles 16, 12. And Asa in the 39th year of his reign was diseased in his feet until his disease. I'm in, I'm in 2 Chronicles 16, 12. His disease was exceeding great, yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. He died. Next verse. So there's a time when a man was sick and instead of praying about it, he just went to every doctor he could find and he died. So it's wrong. It's wrong just to say, God will heal me. I'll never get sick. I claim it in Jesus' name. Now you can do that, but if you don't get better, you know what you better do? You better go to the doctor. That ain't showing a weakness of faith. Pray while you're on the way to the doctor, brother. Now I know doctors don't know everything. And sometimes doctors are even wrong. But there's a man that did it. Now, let me show you in Paul's ministry here. Turn to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Paul the Apostle, one born out of due season. Acts chapter number 19. Let's look again here. Acts 19 verse 2. Sorry. Where's that verse about that? Yeah. Yeah. 12. God wrought special miracles, verse 11, by the hands of Paul, 1911, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs. I, I didn't know a handkerchief could get sick. These sick handkerchiefs or apron. See that? See that? See how you got to learn how to read the Bible? There are people that read. Oh. He had sick handkerchiefs. That's what it says. Is that what your Bible says? Now you see, there's other places where you got to watch stuff like that. that. From his body were brought under the sick handkerchiefs or apron and the disease part. From, uh, Paul had these sick handkerchiefs and aprons 
and the diseases departed from him. That's what it says. See how you got to understand the tip? Remember that thing about the chainsaw I tell y'all? You got to learn how to read. I'll tell you what you better do. When you read your Bible, you better pray, God help me to be in the right spirit and understand. You say, well, that's obvious. Yeah, but there's other places in the Bible where it gets not as obvious and more dangerous. I can show you a bunch of places where the Bible does that. And people hold, believe whole different denominations because somebody didn't read it right. Now that one, you know, is humorous, but that's a good example of it. So I brought from his body, Paul, unto the sick, sick people. Oh, you're adding to the Word of God. Well, that's what it means. Sick people, handkerchiefs or apron, and the disease that departed from them, the evil spirits went out of them. So if somebody was sick, Paul, I, I, didn't, I ain't got no handkerchief on me tonight. Uh, if somebody was sick and they said, somebody sent me and said, Paul, my uncle over here, he's in bad shape. Can you have any? He said, man, that's 100 miles over there and I ain't got nothing but a donkey. I got this revival I'm in. I said, uh, here, take it in Jesus' name, bless this Lord. And he sent it over there and they'd take that handkerchief and lay it on that man and demons would go out of it. I'd like to see somebody do that. I know some try. Uh, man, one time, he brought me this thing, some old, some old healer named Daddy Grace or something like that. <laughs> Daddy Grace or some healer, and don't that, don't that sound like him? Uh, 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 and he said, and I'm not, I'm not being ugly, but we've got to know the truth. you got to know the truth. And uh, this guy was sending out, he said, now friends, for the first 1,000 people that ride in this week, I will send you my special anointed shower cap. This shower cap, just like these, these handkerchiefs went from Paul's body. These anointed shower caps will heal. And, the, and, and he got, got one. One of our deacons did. He got one at, at New Manor. And he brought it to me. And he said, I'll show you this, preacher. And he ordered one of those special anointed shower caps. And brought it to me. And it was a shower cap. And had that guy's hand drawn on it. So I got up and put it in. And I said, look, people. Number one, there's something wrong with the preacher that wants to lay hands on you while you're in the shower. That's a dead giveaway right there. And all God's people say, I don't want him touching me when I'm in the shower. What a stupid thing to come up with. Couldn't you put, you know, uh, some other uh, uh, anointed shower cap. And I said, uh, hey, but that's, that's what Paul did and it worked. You can't do that now. If, if somebody knows, somebody watching me online, if you know somebody that can send us a, a rag from where you are, some anointed snot rag or something. And it, you can send it over here, and I can take it over here at the hospital, or I can help, uh, help Miss Gail, or I, Todd Dalton and Marion. You send it, I'll give you $500 for it. If it works, I'll give you $10,000. How's that for a love offering? You can't do it. You say, but God, there you go again. You go from one extreme to the other. Of course He can. The question is, do we, are we apostles now? And the answer is no. Obviously not. Put up or shut up, brother. You say, I know a man. He, he's a great man of God. And he's here. Okay, take him some dead people over there. And you'll see what kind of great man of God he is. And he's, well, I can tell you a bunch of stories on that. Now, Acts 16. Acts 16. Acts 16 and verse number 25. Here's your miracle. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praise to God. Verse 26, there was a great earthquake, and the foundation of the prison was taken, and the doors were open. Now, something happens between Acts 16 and Romans, Corinthians. Something happens. I, I won't take time to go into all these, but if you want to look it up when you get home, in 1 Timothy 5, you know what he told Timothy? No longer is water, but use a little wine for thine infirmities and thy, thy often infirmities in thy stomach's sake. Paul told Timothy to take some wine mixture for his stomach problem. Why didn't Paul send him a healing bottle? Because Timothy was the last book Paul wrote before he died. The ministry had shifted from Jews to Gentiles and Paul took a registered physician, Luke, with him the entire last part of his only Luke is with me. That's what he said before he died. In Acts 16, he got put in jail. And they prayed and the doors flew open. In 2 Timothy, he got put in jail and prayed and they cut his head off. See the difference? You see the difference between Jew 
and Gentile. You look, people. I've looked at this every way you can look at it. I've studied it ever from ever angle. I've been look, for fifty years. I went through all them stages back when I was young, and I I went to all kinds of healing meetings. I've seen them cast out demons, throw cigarettes across the wall, and hit somebody and smack the head, back of the head. And the guy's up here, and he does his comb like this the whole time he's up here, and he's healing everybody. And I thought, well, I'm not going to send it against it because I don't know. And I did. And I tried to be respectful, and I wanted the truth. But the only way you can look at it is the sign gifts were to Israel. The Bible said Jews require a sign. And the Bible also says tongues are for a sign. And as the ministry shifted from Jew and they rejected the Messiah and went to the Gentiles, the sign gifts of the apostles faded and now it's just preaching the Bible by faith. But, before you jump on me, God can still do now anything He could do back then. It just ain't an apostle with the, the gifts of an apostle. Okay, I'm done. I, I, I spit a lot out at you there. Uh, remember that about uh, uh, Paul taking Luke with him, the physician. Yes, sir. Are we off air? <laughs>